Okay everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. Today we are in Graniteville, Staten Island. We're gonna be talking about the case of Thomas Carmelengo, who murdered and dismembered his adoptive parents. Should be a fun one. Okay, let's flip this around and get into it. All right, this incident took place on June 26th, 1990. But we have to rewind a little bit to give you the full story. The address that we're going to is 175 Willow Road East in Graniteville, Staten Island, as I said before. So he was adopted at two years old by his parents, Anthony and Anne Carmelango. Seem like nice people. To be honest, I have no idea about them. There's, you can't find much info on the story. Pretty much all the info I found in the story is all the info that you can find on the story. He lived in Graniteville most of his life. He had a seemingly normal life. In his late 20s, he started to show signs of some mental illnesses. In 1989, let's not get hit by a car. Like I always say, it would make for a lot of views, but I don't want to be buying a new truck. In 1989, his father, Anthony, admitted him into St. Vincent's Medical Center for a psychiatric evaluation. After six to 12 months of not really leaving the house, we're talking about the son, Thomas, at this point, after him not really leaving the house, laughing to himself, and complaining of non-existent plots against him, which is a common characteristic of schizophrenia, which I think now they might have a different name for it, but that's the name it's more commonly known as. So after that, he was sent to Rockland County Psychi Psychiatric Facility. He eventually returns home. Then... This is where stuff gets crazy. June 26th, 1990, Peter Carmelengo, who is Thomas's cousin, who was also their next door neighbor, swings by the house to pick up something that he left there, something that belonged to him, and accidentally interrupted Thomas disposing of his parents' body parts without Peter knowing what was going on. So Thomas was in the garage, and Peter noticed that he had blood all over his clothes. So obviously that alerted him. What the hell's going on? My aunt and uncle live in this house also with you. And I'm sure he had an idea of Thomas's mental issues. So he hits the garage door button, the automatic garage door button to try and trap him in the garage. And then I guess uh, that's just what he was thinking at the time. Then you figure out a plan from there. And the automatic door does not close fast enough Thomas slips out right under the door. And then Peter grabs a hold of him. They go back and forth a little bit. Thomas slips free and starts running. Peter calls the police right away. And they catch him after a short chase through the neighborhood. They catch him and arrest him. I'm not sure whether or not... Some articles said that he was shirtless at the time. Some articles said that he wasn't. I'm just trying to give you all the info here. We are two minutes away from the house. The house is on a pretty main road. Okay, so later that day, that's at 9 p.m. that this all goes down when the cousin goes to the house. So later that night, the police enter the house to find a fully blood-covered basement with Anthony and Anne, the parents, their headless torsos laying there. The father had his legs cut off. One of the legs was near the body and one of the legs was, see straight ahead that expressway, the cars are whizzing by right there. One of the legs was thrown over the fence towards that expressway because the house is right to the right around this corner. So he crossed the street and tossed the leg over the fence. He was clearly trying to dispose of the body parts and I guess not get caught for this crime, but he was not in a very, um, 
He wasn't thinking of the future too much during this crime, you know? I'm sure he killed them in a crazy state of uh, a little bit of mania and paranoia. And then just said, oh, let me try and clean this all up. It doesn't really work like that. This is the fence that he tossed the leg over. Not really a very hidden thing. So the house is 175. It's a couple houses up. Wait. Say hi to the truck. Continuing on. Don't want to stay out this house long because I saw the TV on before. So four bloody knives were recovered. This is 175 with the gray truck in the driveway. So that's the garage door that he slipped out of and I guess ran away through this neighborhood. Four bloody knives were found and a bow saw was found in the basement and upstairs in the sink in the bathroom the blade was found, the bloody blade. So this, look at the hydrant right there. That, that should have been my spot, but I don't want to be, my truck's loud, people know. People know when I'm parked that side of a spot. Now, a lot of you are gonna mention that there's a very similar incident that went on here in 2015, like shockingly similar. I'll cover that eventually too, don't worry. So, I said they were headless. The heads were tossed into a storm drain and found, they said about 10 houses away from, I have a picture of them digging up the storm drain, 10 houses or 50 yards away from the house. This is a storm drain. I'm not sure if this is the one, but you get the idea of what he was doing. He was getting rid of evidence. Maybe there's one farther down also. I don't see one down that way. Maybe down the other direction, who knows. When he was asked by police why he did it, he told investigators that they had been replaced by Egyptians and he had to get rid of them. So he was obviously not in a normal state of mind when he took the lives of his parents. Here is the house where it all went down in 1990. Alright, continuing on. He was deemed incapable to stand trial. I don't know exactly what they did with him in the meantime. I'm assuming he was probably put into a mental institution of some sort. I don't know though. Until seven years later, he was sentenced to 50 years in prison when I guess he was deemed that he could stand trial. I read that every two years he was reevaluated if he could stand trial. And I guess at seven years they said he was able to. Um, it, he got one count of assault and two counts of second degree murder. This is a really terrible one. I always say this. I hope you guys enjoyed, but I also kind of hope you didn't. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Woody Dash Count. I post every single day. And please leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. That's where I get a lot of my ideas from. I will see you guys in the next one.